It is May 21st, 2016, and we're going to talk about the Chevy or GM based LS engine for a few minutes and some of the issues with the engine. Good engine, no doubt, but they have a couple challenges, let's just say. All right, now this is a 2013 Avalanche that came in with low oil pressure. It it would when hot, it would and idle, it would turn the light on. It would light up the dash saying shut off the engine, low oil pressure, all this alarm. And the oil gauge was reading real low. Uh, customer had two new sending units put in at the dealer and the little filter under the sending unit and it made no difference. So it ended up here at the shop because they say that I'm the guy to go to. Whether that's true or not, I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, so I've rebuilt a lot of these engines, and somewhere around 2007, 2008, there was a noticeable drop in oil pressure. And what General Motors is trying to do was get the oil off the crankshaft. This is what I understand. I mean, if somebody knows something different, please correct me if I'm wrong. This is what I've read. This is the way I understand it. And it makes sense to me because this was, a, this, this was something that, that circle track racers or IndyCar racers and drag racers found out a long time ago. Smokey Eunuch, um, Wally Booth, that more or less developed the AMC race program for AMC. He friend of mine, personal friend of mine, told me they found over a hundred horsepower by getting the oil off the crankshaft. And they did that by making fancy fingers that went in into the oil in, in between the throws of the crank and, and got the oil off the crank. Anyway, so part of the reason General Motors is doing this is for fuel economy. They, they're trying to always meet the, the, the latest fuel economy standards they're doing a lot of things like trying to get the air to flow laminally underneath the, the truck. Uh, in this case, it's a truck uh, because there's a lot of wind drag when air gets caught up underneath vehicles. They're, they're doing all kinds of, a lot of development in the wind tunnels. But in the engine department, this is one of the things they did along with shutting off cylinders. This engine has the ability to run on four, six, or eight cylinders. Well. I don't exactly know what they did to, to cause the oil pressure to get low, but I know what you can do to try and solve the problem. And that's what I'm going to discuss right now. Uh, one of the things I'm, I just did was I installed new cam bearings in this engine. And um, figures my phone would ring right now. Um, oh, it just quit. Okay. So uh, in the process of that, installing new cam bearings, um, you can buy one over cam bearings. You can buy standards and ones. So what I did was I bought, and what I do on these engines is I buy one over, meaning they are thicker by a half a thousandth per side going in. Not on the outside, but on the inside. So they fit the cam tighter. So on this particular engine, it, it fit best the one over bearings in the first three slots. I tried putting the one over in number four, it wasn't happy, so I put a standard in number four and a standard in number five. And that's fine, the, the cam is, and the cam's very happy, there's no, rat, the cam was rattling before in that block with standard bearings, and but, but of course the bearings were worn slightly too. So then the other thing you want to do is you want to buy one over rods and main bearings, and you can get one over bearings in uh, both mains and rods from engine tech. Um, you can't buy them from Clevite like that. You can only buy 10s, 20s, 30s. You can't buy one overs yet from anybody that I know of except for engine tech. Um, so if you're looking for a fancy race bearing, you're out of luck. You're going to have to grind a crank and go to the next step and fight your tolerances that way. But in this case, I got a perfect crankshaft. I got a crank that polished and, and as good as new, 
and it's right to size. If you, I mic these and they are right to size. So I'm going to take and I'm going to hand fit this crank into this block by using a mixture of standard and one over shells. And I'll use plastic gauge and I'm going to get my tolerance, my oil clearance down to about a thousand. You can run it as tight as eight tenths of a thousand, eighty percent of a thousand. You can run it that tight or you can be up around close to two thousand. So I'm going to try and get it close to one. And now why are we doing that? We want to, we want to try and eliminate the bleed. Uh, and when you eliminate the bleed, your aggregate average oil pressure will be higher. So the other thing we, we're going to do is we're going to put uh, the latest and greatest Melling oil pump in, the 10355. I spoke to Melling tech line last week and they are working on a even higher volume pump than this. But that's what we have right now to work with and I've used them before and they work good. Uh, the other thing you want to do on these engines is you want to make sure you replace this cam plate. Uh, this is a little rubber seal on here that is next to nothing and it's sealing up the, the, the journals the, uh, that run down to feed your lifters, right? So we're going to put a new one on with a new seal. You want to be sure you get a new cam plate. Um, now, one more thing that you can do. Because it has shut off cylinders, it uses these fancy quick bleed down lifters and it uses them on four of the eight cylinders. This customer has already done a computer flash that disables the cylinder deactivation. No longer, it runs on eight cylinders all the time. So if your customer or if your vehicle, if it's your personal vehicle and you've done this type of shutoff, you can then replace those active, active lifters with standard lifters and that is going to reduce the bleed. Uh, this customer has decided not to take that avenue. We're going to run the original active lifters. We're not going to replace them because there was no metal in this engine uh, and they're expensive. Oh man, I bought them before. You got to get them. At, I mean, I buy them from the dealer. You can get them aftermarket and take your chances if you want. I only put in GM original parts on, when it comes to active lifters on these LS engines. Uh, because there's so much work. If, if one fails, you got to pull the heads to get to them. Anyway, um, he has decided not to go that route. We're going to leave the active lifters in there and see what we get. I'm sure it'll be fine. The other thing you want to do is you want to replace this. This is your active cylinder management solenoid. Um, they are, th this gasket, okay, every one of these every one of these holes is a potential leak area. Your main oil pressure comes back, comes up in the back here on this main, on this main hole and that's where your oil pressure sending unit threads in and then it travels like through a valve body through here and each one of these is a seal holding back full oil pressure all the time. Well those are all potential bleed areas and this is just a rubber gasket that definitely is flattened out you know from age. Okay it's whatever 13 so it's six years old, uh, a little over 100,000 miles, and it's, and it's flattened right out. So I replaced this whole assembly. And uh, they say you can buy the gasket separately, um, but it's not, it's, it, it, these things aren't that much money. I just replaced the whole thing. And the other thing I'll mention to you is, okay, I, I put real high-end rings on these engines. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I use the best Molly rings. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be Molly, it can be other ones, but I put in um, Molly rings. And the other thing I want to mention to you is just use GM gaskets. Don't, don't mess around. The, these don't cost any more. The original equipment General Motors gaskets don't cost any more than the aftermarket. There's your factory head gaskets. They, they don't cost any more than the than the, than the aftermarket and you'll never have a problem if you use the original equipment General Motors gaskets. I've never had a leak issue on 
and LS when I was done. So those are the areas that uh, I wanted to discuss. I mean, there's a lot more that can be said about this engine. A lot of good can be said about this engine. It's a, it's a darn fine engine. I mean, it cross-bolted main caps. It's strong. Um, there are some downsides to the engine, in my opinion, especially if you live in a humid climate. We're in Michigan here. And if you don't run this engine hard and get it, get it hot, they build sludge. And uh, in fact, I can show you a picture of one that I took apart that built a ton of sludge and it was coming off the timing cover. I'm sorry, I should have had this photo ready. Um, let me see if I can find it real quick. So what happens is um, the humidity, you, you know, you've got the inside of this engine is a cavern and the air comes in and out of it through the vent, through the ventilation system and our moisture in, in Michigan especially and any you know really northern climate where, where it's damp on the humidity uh, you know east of the Mississippi you have um, you have uh, a lot of air a lot of humidity in the air right well uh, I'm not gonna find this uh, picture I don't believe so but anyway the humidity ends up condensing on the inside of the uh, engine and if you don't get it hot enough uh, if you don't run it hot enough there it is. Um, it will do this. Okay. Here's the timing cover. This is just the timing cover off a customer's engine, and that's the oil pan right there. Obviously, for anybody that knows anything about engines, you know what you're looking at. And this is just humidity right here, condensation off the front of that cold timing cover. And it ran down in the pan, and it made a gooey mess down in the bottom of the pan. And event, what the symptoms of that were he had noisy lifters because it was picking that junk up. And the oil filter bypasses when it's cold. So that junk traveled, got inside the lifters. Lifters were ticking. Took it apart, found the problem. Now, hot southern climates or dry climates, especially if you're west of the Mississippi and you're in an arid desert type environment, you're not going to have that kind of an issue. Uh, and, and uh, this is partly due to the design of this engine. It's the, uh, the big cast aluminum oil pan. You can see it there. That thing is a big radiator of heat, right? It radiates heat, just like this timing cover. Radiates, radiates heat. You know, the fan's blowing. In this case, this, this truck's got an electric fan, so that helps. But on an engine that's got an active fan all the time, well, you got cold air blowing on that. You got air, it's not necessarily cold, but you get my point. You got, you, until the engine especially warms up, there's hardly any, any, any heat coming off that radiator. And if your drive cycle is such that you're stopping, starting in traffic, and you're not really getting the engine warm, which was the case of that customer there with the sludge in the pan, he lived 10 miles from work and it was city driving. These are the, these are the issues with the, with the 5.3. Uh, that I've run into here in Michigan it is a lot of sludge related issues. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I say, the focus, the whole point of this video really was to focus on the oil pressure, trying to increase it, trying to get it back up. Uh, and these little tricks that I'm doing right here definitely work. I've done it several times, many times, and it works good. You end up with a good hot oil pressure of 30 pounds or better. When you're done. So, anyway, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I, I don't always have the answer. And if I don't, maybe I'll learn something. Maybe somebody will chime in and teach me something. And I always appreciate that. So, thanks for watching, and we'll talk with you soon.